so the next topics will start is isolated footing okay first of all we have to know that what is footing footing is basically the structure or the footing or foundations is basically the structure which is provided below the superstructure to transfer the load from the superstructures to the soil okay there are mainly two types of footings are there one is called shallow footings and another is called deep footings okay we are not going on details on this whatever all those things okay we are mainly concentrating on when a individual footings are provided a single footing is provided then that footing is called a isolated footing when uh, multiple footings are provided together then there are various things are like, like we can call combined footing step footing or footing many things are there our uh, in this lecture so we are mainly concerned with isolated footing means when individual footings are provided okay that means for transferring of the load from a individual column if we provide a individual footings then that is called isolated footing now there are two things maybe in an isolated footing or in any kind of footing it may happen that the load is exactly passing through the center then we can say the axially loaded footing if load is not passing through the center then you can say it may be uniaxially loaded footing or biaxially loaded footing anyway uh, this part also we are not covering here here we are mainly concentrating on the axially loaded footing also in this lectures we will be mainly check the pedestal pedestal basically those type of footings where loads are very less and reinforcements are not required though we provide some minimum reinforcements okay so first of all let us see what is iso footing what is isolated footing we are talking about isolated footing it's just a figure and uh, let us see first of all what is that isolated footing suppose mm, i have a footing like that and say there is a column some load is coming from this column so this is a footing so this footing individual footing is there if you see this in on plan so what you will find that one foundation will be there and then there is a column okay this is the column from where the load is coming to the structures okay so this is a isolated footing this is one type of okay single isolated footing or flat isolated footing we can provide stepped isolated footing okay so this is one and then we can provide another step and then above that we have the column from where the load is transferring okay so this is the column from where the load is transferring okay so if you see on the plan what will you find you will find two steps are there this and two steps might be visible this is one and then this is inside steps okay and then finally there is a column right where some load is there and and then another type we can provide is a sloped footing sloped footing means one base foundation will be there like that okay say so this portion a little bit flat portion will be there then a slope will be there some kind of slope will be given and on that flat flat portion the column is supported actual column is supported okay so if you see this part also on the plan it will be look it will look little bit other way you will see the edge so this is my center actual column and this is the flat portion of the column just below the column the flat portion and then we will see this edge okay so i just i have drawn three types of isolated footing first one is then i'll call flat okay first one we called as flat these are called step footing and this is called sloped footing okay so like that many other uh, uh, combinations are possible for the footing okay now what i am saying what is pedestal pedestal is the is a column compression member so, uh, is a footing which basically trans uh, 
peristalsis. Column peristal is a type of column which basically transfer very light load on the footing. So in in such cases, we need not to provide the concrete on the foundations. Then we we can call this as a plain concrete foundations. Okay. So we'll take the example of plain concrete foundation and we'll see how to design the plain concrete foundation here. Okay. So we'll go for plain concrete foundation. Plain concrete concrete foundation and we will see what are the defined requirements for the plain concrete foundation okay we are not discussing beyond that part okay uh, quickly i will draw one plain concrete foundations here for easy to understand Here this height is D, this one is L and this is B, then what will be this? This will be L minus B divided by 2, okay. So this is a plain concrete pedestal, plain concrete foundations, okay. So this angle is alpha this angle here this angle is this angle is alpha okay so this action is called actually strat action this angle is action is called strat action then i can draw another footing So this is basically some tie action is there and because of that we have to provide some nominal reinforcement here, nominal reinforcement for tie actions, okay. So this, this force is called tie force, okay. So anyway, so this is a plain concrete foundations and in this plain concrete foundation we are going to design so what is to be designed 
we have to design this length the other side that is the dimensions i have to design and then depth i have to design this view will be known to us view will be known to us okay so how to design that okay guideline is saying that when the column is relatively lighter loaded and the base area requirement of a footing is relatively low it may be economical to provide it may be economical to provide a simple plain concrete block foundation such a footings is sometimes called as <coughs> sorry pedestal footing so in case of pedestal footing what is to be done if the bearing stress at the column base under the ultimate load is less than fbr max i'll tell you okay what is saying here that if the bearing stress under the column base at the column sorry bearing stress at the column base at the column base is less than fbr max i will tell you what is that fbr max then the force transfer from the column base then the force transfer from the column base is achievable without the need for any reinforcement so what is saying if the bearing stress at the base of the column okay base of the column so what is the bearing stress at the base of the column that we can calculate like that the the bearing stress at the base of the column okay maybe say we are denoted by pr that will be equal to what is the total load coming from the column and whatever be the cross sectional area of the footing or cross section sorry cross sectional area of the column okay total load that is coming from the column divided by cross sectional area of the column that will give you the bearing stress at the base of the column okay just above the footing that you can get and it is saying that this must be less than this term fbr max now the question is what is fbr max we will see this in the next slide what is fbr max fbr max is basically denoted as the maximum bearing stress okay maximum bearing stress that can occur is denoted by fbr max and that has been given in the code book that that can be calculated as 0.45 fck under root a1 divided by a2 okay if you refer code book close number 34.4 is given that the maximum bearing stress at the base of the column can be calculated as 0.45 fck under root a1 by a2 now the question is what is a1 and what is a2 here a2 is the loaded area at the column base suppose i have a column and then i am providing a footing in this manner okay then this is called a2 okay and a1 is the maximum area of the portion of the supporting surface that is geometrically similar to and concentric with the loaded area now a1 will be the same in this case you say that directly the load is falling in this portion of the column so in this case a1 and a2 is equal but if you see the other case other example suppose this Suppose this is the column and this column is supported on a sloped foundation like that okay so this is the portion which is just below the column that will be denoted as a2 but here the column is directly spreading on this area okay so this area will be denoted as a1 so what is saying it is saying that a2 is the loaded area at the column base so it is clear cut column base a1 is the maximum area of the portion of the supporting surface that is geometrically similar to and concentric with the loaded area in the case of stepped or sloping footings 
the area a1 is to be taken as that of the lower base of the largest frustum of a pyramid contained wholly within the footing that means it is talking about the lower base of this first term okay this is the largest first term how the load is transferring from here so this base we have to take as the a1 okay then you find out this a1 by a2 ratio and get the square root okay again the code book has given a limit code book said that the square root of a1 and upon a2 is limited to 2 you cannot take more than 2 if could we say that if this value is coming more than 2 then this will be limited to okay now with this what we will do we will get the value of fbr max and then we have to find out what is the pressure just below the found below the column so okay, that pressure is coming from the column and then deduct uh, multiply whatever the load that is coming from the column divided by the cross section area of the column that will give you the pressure that is coming from the column and this is the fbr max if FBR is, if the pressure that is coming from the column is less than FBR max, then we don't need to provide any kind of reinforcement. Or other way, what we can do? This FBR max, what is what is the column load given? That we know that let's say the column load at the column is PU. Okay. Now, if you multiply this FBR max with the area of the column, so that will give you the maximum force i can say if this maximum force is more than less than more than pu or otherwise i can say that if fba is more than pu then i don't need to provide any kind of additional reinforcement it's the same thing what i said earlier and if this is the reverse case if pu is more than fb then i have to provide the additional reinforcement. or otherwise what i said that if, if the pressure that is coming that is coming at the bottom feather is pressure if this pressure is less than fb max pressure less than fb max is ultimately what we can say why from this pressure is coming pressure is coming pu divided by the cross sectional area of the column this is multiplied by fb max or you can say that this fu is less than equal to fb max into this area is give you the fb if this is the condition then we need don't need to provide the reinforcement but still in the plane concrete we we can we need to provide the minimum reinforcement don't need to design the reinforcements okay so this is giving us the idea that whether we need to provide the reinforcement or not on the bottom of that part okay now once in a in a, in a col column once i know what is the total uh, load that is coming then what i have to do i have to increase it by around 15 percent 10 to 15 percent to calculate to take care of the uh, self weight of the pedestal okay then we can find out what is the area required what will be the area required for that foundation that will be equal to say 1.15 of p divided by the bearing capacity of the soil bearing capacity of the soil whatever it is when that will give you the area now depending on the column you get the proportion if the column is given square you make it square if the column is given rectangular you make it rectangular that is very clear we know from the earlier also <clears throat> next part is to calculate the depth okay so for depth calculation code book has given a guideline in clause number 34.1.3 if you refer how to calculate the depth of the footing okay so i am just writing that to said that the depth of the footing is equal to l minus b by 2 into 10 alpha if you just refer to the figure that i have done initially this is l minus b by 2 and this is alpha so l minus b 10 alpha is giving you the d <coughs> simple if this is alpha this angle is alpha alpha so 10 theta is what by this perpendicular d by this okay that means d is equal to this into 10 alpha so from there we can get the depth okay so d equal to l minus b 10 alpha now question is what is 10 alpha this 10 alpha is written in the code book that the 10 alpha must be greater than equal to 0 0.9 times under root 100 q max divided by fck plus 1 so could has given a guideline that this 10 alpha must be greater than equal to 0 0.9 square root 100 q max divided by fck we know fck is what uh, character strength of the concrete 
and Q max is the maximum soil pressure under the service loads. Okay. Then now you can change that. Now now the what will be the equation? Then D will be an inequality. D will be equal to greater than equal to L by two multiplied by zero point nine multiplied by I am writing this in bracket zero point nine square root of this part if you write this or otherwise a simplified equation is given after doing all calculation that this is 0 0.9 times square root 100 q max divided by fck plus 1 this will be within the bracket and then outside the bracket l minus b divided by 2 so using this equation we can get the d value okay Now, we will take an example and we will see how we can apply this concept for finding out the depth. Okay, for the measure of this. Come to the next verse. Okay. <clears throat> you can write down the question. Design a plain concrete footing for a column of size 300 by 300. Column is given with a size of 300 mm by 300 mm carrying an axial load of 330 kilonewton. 330 kilo newton under service loads that means under service loads due to under service dead and live load okay this is a service dead and live load assume an allowable soil bearing pressure of 360 kilo newton per millimeter square okay so qa is given soaring bearing pressure 360 kilo meter at a depth of 1 meter at 1 meter depth okay bearing pressure of the soil say say, say this is the, the uh, column so this is the location of the column so from the location of the column below the soil at a depth of 1 meter what is the bearing pressure qa that is given as 360 kilo newton per meter square assume m25 concrete and fe415 steel assume m25 concrete and fe415 steel i will read the question again Design a plain concrete footing for a column 300 by 300 mm carrying an axial load of 330 kN under service dead and live load. Assume an allowable swearing pressure, bearing pressure of 360 kN per meter square at a depth of 1 meter below ground. Assume M20 concrete and FE415 steel. So in that case we have to design it. Since we are do, doing it by limit state method of design. So service load is given. So we will find out the factored load. So factored load P will be equal to 1.5 into 330 how much it is giving it is giving 495 kilo newton okay so we will first will cal calculate what is the bearing maximum bearing stress okay so maximum bearing stress is said it is equal to 0 0.45 fck under root a1 divided by a2 okay here we are doing flat footing so in case of flat footing this a1 and a2 are equal okay so this value will be equal to 1 that means fbr max equal to 0 0.45 fck then what we can find out we can find out the maximum force say maximum force is fr that will be equal to 0 0.45 what is our grade of the concrete grade of the concrete here in this problem is <coughs> given oh, sorry m20 not m25 anyway 20 25 whatever you want we can take m20 and then multiplied by the cross section area of the column cross section area of the column is 300 so 300 square so this is giving you how much this is giving you 810 kilo newton okay so maximum force that come at the base is 810 kilo newton what is the given load at the column that is given 495 kilo newton so 495 kilo newton is less than 800 10 kilo newton that is fbr so what does it indicate this indicate that full force transfer is possible without the need of reinforcement you can write down a statement it indicates full force transfer is possible without the requirement or without the need of reinforcement okay that means it is a plain cement concrete footing now we need to find out the size of footing 
size of footing as i said that size of footing that means that we need to find out the area of the footing area of the footing will be equal to 10 to 15 percent we have to take as the self weight of the column divided by the bearing pressure what is the bearing pressure given in the question the bearing pressure given in the question is 360 okay so if we divide it it gives how much 1.01 meter square if it is a 1.01 meter square then approximately you can say 1 meter by 1 meter size you can give so uh, size of footing is 1 meter by 1 meter okay next we go for depth calculation what is the depth calculation depth calculation depth must be greater than equal to l minus b by 2 into 0 point l minus b by 2 into 10 alpha right okay so what is the meaning of 10 alpha 10 alpha is 0 0.9 square root 100 q max divided by fck plus 1 this whole thing multiplied by l minus b divided by 2 so 0 0.9 square root q max is given how much q max is given 360 what is the unit 360 kilo newton per meter square 360 kilo newton per meter square you can convert into newton per millimeter square because fck is in newton per millimeter square so you convert it kilo newton for kilo newton you write 10 to the power 3 and for meter square you write 10 to the power 6 okay plus 1 whatever the value comes multiply this with what l is given how much 1000 millimeter b is given 300 millimeter we have used divided by 2 do this calculation this is giving that d must be greater than 527 mm so we can take any value greater than this okay so let us say d value i am taking is 530 okay so approximately we have calculated that this is we are providing 1000 by 1000 by 530 mm but who said it is correct okay we have to check whether this is correct or not how to check we have to check it by pressure what is the total pressure that is going to act after the construction of the foundation okay let us see what was that column the pressure that is coming from the column is column load was 330 and area we have given what was that 330 kilo newton i am writing in terms of kilo newton and area of the foundation is how much 1 meter by 1 meter so this is the pressure that is coming from the column then plus where was our foundation what is the total uh, force that will come from the foundation we know what is the concrete density concrete density replacement concrete density is 24 kilo newton per meter cube and what is the depth of this that is 0 0.53 meter so this much will come from the foundation plus since our bearing capacity is given at a 1 meter depth but we have only 530 mm so remaining part is what soil so for soil depth is how much 0 0.47 and what is the density of the soil density of the soil is taken as 18 kilo newton per meter cube if you do this calculation how much it comes it is coming out to be 350 351.2 kilo newton per meter square okay so once you design this you are getting a q max value as how much 351.2 kilo newton per meter square what is given in the problem in the problem bearing capacity of the soil is given how much 360 kilo newton per meter square that means whatever the design we have done it is safe okay so hence it it is accepted now again i said that design is safe but still we need to provide some minimum reinforcement what is the minimum reinforcement 12 percent of the zero sorry 0 0.12 percent of the cross section area is to be provided provide like that you write provide minimum reinforcement in both the direction both the direction so AST minimum is equal to 0.12 percent of cross sectional area cross sectional area is BD okay that is 0 0.12 by 100 what is B here B here is 1000 and depth is how much 530 right 
if we do this calculation is coming 636 mm square this is 530 this is 1000 multiplied by 530 okay so we need to provide a minimum of 630 mm square now you can decide some diameter and number of bars okay so if you check that it is provided six number of 12 dia bar if you provide six number of 12 dia bar the area is coming 678 mm square and our calculation we need to provide minimum 636 so this is safe okay so this is how you can design a plain concrete foundation and also you can check that whatever the minimum share minimum reinforcement that you need to provide okay so these are very simple part and you can check it's not like that only the calculation is enough because we have to check that this soil pressure is also coming less than the limiting value okay so that's it about the design of plain concrete foundation go through this part check some more examples uh, from any rcc books okay